love truly blind? Or is it just the most exploitive, lucrative topic that's taken over reality TV these days? You tell me because it sure ain't blind. My neck is in pain with the amount of whiplash that I have gotten from couple to couple, episode to episode. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Lauren, if you're new here, where I cover all things pop culture, a lot of Taylor Swift content, but today we are the Love is Blind Obsessed Squad. As of filming this intro, I have not yet watched the wedding episode. Right now, I just wanna discuss my thoughts on Jimmy, Chelsea, Clay, who thinks that somehow you can genetically inherit the need to cheat on your spouse. Like, what is that about? I'm also gonna be kind of doing a little recap of some of the content I have been making over on my Instagram and my TikTok because, oh my God, did Matthew not give anyone else the creeps? Like the sociopathic, there's something in your deep freezer creeps. I have so many thoughts on him. Grab your wine, grab your snacks, get cozy because we've got a lot to talk about and I'm dying to know what you guys think. First up, these wine glasses. I mean, I saw this on Amazon and I was like, I have to get it and have to throw a little Love is Blind party at my home. Cute prop for filming. I'll include that link down below. Very affordable for four of them. I wasn't about to spend $20 on one wine glass that Netflix is selling. This is a good place to start this video because everyone's like, oh, why, do they, why is everyone drinking out of this? It looks like they're drinking wine at 8 a.m. Is it just like their brand? What's the deal with these glasses? These glasses have honestly everything to do with why I think season six was so so good and juicy. It's because of the editing. Any castmate or any mom, dad, family person who is filmed on Love is Blind, if they're having drinks, if they're having coffee, whatever it is, it has to be out of one of these glasses. And the reason for that is continuity while filming. For example, in the pods, they are having like five hour long dates in there. They're switching drinks. The level of liquid is changing. Maybe the color is changing. It's just so that they can splice and cut up each scene to make sure that the story is fluid, moves around, and so that the editors can control the narrative. That's why. That's why these glasses exist. It's actually very, very smart, but it honestly brings me to my next point, which is that editing is everything. This show is just such a great example of how good editing can make you believe anything. When episodes one through six dropped, I had so many opinions on Chelsea and Jimmy. And then the second that I finished episode eight, I was like, wait, is it her? Is it him? I kind of like him now. I kind of like him way more than I did. But I feel like the stakes are so high because they're talking about marriage. You're about to meet their family. You're about to try on a wedding dress. And I just... Editing is real, y'all. Everything I'm covering right now is up to episode 11, Roller Coaster of Love. Let's start it off with my favorite cast members because this has changed many times throughout. And I just, I gotta start with Jessica, my all time fave girl. Like, what a positive, well spoken, badass human. Such a big fan of her. I love that she's so close with her daughter, Autumn. Just think that Jessica is so mature and and well-spoken, and I'm sorry, the EpiPen moment with Jimmy, I just, I, I, that was amazing. Like, I was like yelling at the scream. I was snapping, just like, this is amazing. This is insane. You get it, girl. I don't understand the fascination with Jimmy. I do think he is cute. Everyone online keeps calling him a thumb, relating him to a thumb thumb from Floops Fooglies, which tickles my little 90s heart and I love that. But it's very interesting to me that Jimmy had such a hold on these women. Everyone was obsessed with Jimmy in the pods. He does have a very, very nice sounding voice. I will say that. And then I wanna say in the first couple episodes, Chelsea was like my top favorite. I love her personality. I think she's really fun, really sweet and positive. And it's like all these men were so obsessed with her in the pods. And I, and I really loved that and I loved watching someone who talked about having insecurities be like, oh my God, these people wanna like get to know me. And then the episodes rolled on. And yes, I do know that editing is a thing, but my opinions on Chelsea changed slightly. But I do wanna bring it back to editing is a real thing because damn, the editors did Chelsea dirty. Very, very dirty in this show. Jessica Vess Vessel? I just call her by her Instagram handle, Jess Vess, went on the Vile Files podcast and talked about how her and Chelsea are friends and how Chelsea got a really, really bad edit. I mean, oh my God, the martini fight, you guys. The dirty martini fight. Also in the pods. Hey, you made this out. Where are you? That was more embarrassing. That was embarrassing. I didn't see anybody. I didn't talk to anybody. Else. I know, but they saw you. 
So. So you're going to believe some girls you barely know that got rejected off of a reality dating show over your fiance? Granted that you barely know as well, but I just, I wonder what this episode was like for Chelsea to watch. I don't want to be with someone who wants to go out and party. Maybe I drove there, I had one drink, I came home. But is that something I'm going to deal with? You sat there and lied to me. Hey. You, you don't think that I care about you just because I want to go out and like uh, have one drink just to make an appearance for a friend and come right back? That's not the kind of person I want to be with. Is that the kind of person you are? Because it's not the person I want to be with. It's not. A good friend? Responsible drinker? Someone who cares about you and his friends enough to show up physically for both of you? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Probably not someone you want to be with. Clearly, you're looking for someone who needs to match your level of toxic drama. If it's offending you that I have girlfriends, it's another whole nother issue. Who were you with last night? Who were you with last night? Right here. This pissed me off so much. You can see it in her face. You can see it in the way that she asks it twice. She knows exactly what she's doing, blacked out, drunk or not. She knew what she was saying in order to hurt Jimmy the most, which is just such a toxic trait. This is something that Jimmy literally said to her off camera. Hey, this is something I wanted to talk to you about. Do not bring this up in front of Netflix cameras, okay? And she knew what she was doing. Jimmy literally like walks away in the scene and is like, I'm not doing this anymore. I am always wanting to give Chelsea the benefit of the doubt. Maybe she got a bad edit, which is definitely possible. She's clearly very drunk in this whole scene. She's slurring her words. She even brings it up later that this was like her dirty martini fight or whatever. But like, that's not a good thing, girl. Not a good thing. Terrible, actually. I was with eight fraternity brothers and two of their girlfriends. Okay. Okay. Do you think I'm lying to you about that? Yeah, I do, because I heard from other people that you were not with just fraternity friends. Who? Mackenzie? Who are you with? I know it was Jacob Jack. Lee, West. I was not with Jazz. I've never saw Jazz. It was Jazz. Oh, my goodness. Embarrassing. I was not with Jazz. Right. I was not with Jess. I swear to God, I was not with Jess. Yes, Chelsea is very insecure about the whole Jess topic, but to be honest, she has good reasons to feel that way. Do you remember when Chelsea asked Jimmy, what was the first thing you noticed about me when you saw me for the first time? And do you remember his answer? He said, you have nice teeth and big boobs. Dude, and then when he goes on to describe other women's bodies from the pods, AD is looking so stacked, so-and-so is really good looking, and then he looks straight to the camera and is like, She definitely lied to me on, on some, uh, how she looks. Chelsea told me she looks like Megan Fox. In the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. I, I'm very attracted to her. I, I can work with that. Not a good look, dude. Of course she's insecure. You haven't really given her the validation that a fiancé should. And no, I am not saying that a woman can only feel confident if a man makes her feel that way. That should come from within. So don't you type that into my comments. I also found out that the contract that everybody has to sign says that if you get proposed to on the show or that if you propose to someone, you are required to make it to the altar or you owe the production company $50,000 each. I don't know, there's a lot of shady things going down. It was so hard to watch. Wasted, blackout Chelsea, talk in circles. The lights were on, but no one was home. You could see it, her eyes were red, and she even like apologized later on. They're like, oh, that was like my dirty martini fight, but like, Damn, the editors knew exactly what they were doing. What other footage are you hiding from us? When are we going to see the footage of Matthew and Amber in the pods where he said the exact same thing that he said to AD to Amber? Hopefully we will get that information at the reunion if he chooses to show up. AD is also another one of my top favorites of this season. God damn, that woman is stunning. Hardworking, educated, and just exudes this kind of kindness and I don't know she's just very has a way with words that I just I love her I appreciate her but also in the beginning I was like girl what do you see in Matthew 15 questions Matthew I cannot I cannot like I said on my Instagram and TikTok I had a cold personality to start off to Whole personality, more like narcissist. I, that doesn't even begin to describe the terrible vibes that you brought to Love is Blind this season, Matthew. Please, please watch. I have questions written down and they're numbered one through 15. You can pick a number. What is something you think you excel at in relationships? My loyalty and devotion to my partner. What about you? 
You know, I was just going to ask the questions. I wasn't really anticipating getting the same thing. Oh my God. Oh my God is right. How can you go on a dating show, show up with 15 questions and not expect someone to ask them to you back? Have you ever had a conversation? The vibes that he gives off are just controlling, closed off, and very, very toxic. What are you looking for? I'm certainly not doing this to become a C-list celebrity. America's going to be watching. I think I now got the entire country of America on my side. America, they do love a good underdog. Yeah, I feel like I broke somebody's heart on national TV. Okay. I can't even believe that. America's watching. You're right. America is watching. We're watching and all thinking to ourselves that someone's got to check out your deep freezer in the back very, very soon. I'm still reeling from all the extra tea that we've been getting on the side from social media. I mean, damn. Jeremy was engaged to a woman two weeks before filming. Trevor had a very serious girlfriend, I think, right before, right around that time. What I'm about to say next doesn't even feel like a, a thing that I really even want to talk about because the principle of it is just you should never out someone and their sexuality, but it's making the rounds on the internet and there are allegations that Kenneth might actually be gay because his cousin might have outed him on Facebook. One, do not out people in their sexuality. That's really messed up on so many levels. Two, Kenneth, if this is true, why did you mislead poor Britney? Why did you mislead poor Britney? We did get more information that there was obviously more that happened than was shown to us. But I feel like if you're straight, gay, bi, curious, any of that, you just, you gotta be upfront with the person you are pledging your life to. That's all, that's how I feel. Live your truth, obviously, but also be truthful to your future partner. Wouldn't you want that in return? And even Megan Fox, Chelsea Gate, that has just sweeped the internet and honestly in a way that I don't really like. I have my own opinions on Chelsea that I will share with you later on. There will be timestamps down below, but I want to bring you back to the episode where she literally says, don't get excited. I don't see it. Everyone tells me that I look like this person, but it's only because I have light eyes and dark hair. Don't get excited. She said that over and over again, that she doesn't believe that she looks like Megan Fox. However, on the other hand, she is the one that brought up this question. Does anyone ever tell you that you look like a celebrity? Talk about fishing. The way that they had shown it to us is Jimmy mentioned something about, oh, something else with another girl that I'm dating here. I don't want to talk about it. And then they immediately cut to Chelsea being like, so does anyone ever tell you you look a celebrity? My brain is like, did Chelsea really ask that on her own? Just just for fun, for shits and giggles? Or were they playing one of the like the question games? There's like a bunch of little games in these pods that the producers give them to like have stuff to do on their dates. Was it one of the questions? I don't know. But oh my God, the amount of hate that Chelsea has gotten from this one moment is just so not okay. Let's talk about that for a minute because yes, my opinions on Chelsea have just been a roller coaster and I'm excited to see what happens at the end. The way my current relationship with Chelsea up to the most current episodes is not great, not good. Martini driven fights don't end well, but no one deserves the barrage of hate. She's gone on her Instagram and her TikTok that she's been getting death threats. Like, hear me out, hear me out. You guys have every right to have your opinions because let's be honest, <laughs> wolf. Imagine spending the year just really working on yourself, finding those inner demons and really becoming the woman you've always wanted to be, um, sitting with, you know, hardships in your life that you've really never really sat with before and then having to relive it. It's mental. Okay. But like, I don't know, like maybe let's just like seize the death threats for a minute. I don't know. Just a thought. It's such a weird dystopian world that we live in on my commentary videos on Instagram that I've been posting. Yes, I am commenting and I'm getting fired up about like the storyline and, the, and the, the characters that the editors are serving us. But in the back of my mind and something that I'm carrying with me in my brain throughout the whole show is that these are real humans here. Like, I would never ever want my worst drunken blacked out moments to be filmed. I wouldn't be proud of that. I'm sure Chelsea's not proud of that. It's so wild to me that this was filmed a year ago. Imagine going on this experience, filming, getting proposed to, having them meet your family, your, all of your friends and family like know what's going on, and then you either get married 
or you don't and then you move on with your life or you live with your partner and then a year later after you've either moved on or moved in together it all airs and like you have no idea what the editors have done like it's wild to me that Netflix doesn't show the episodes to the cast members before it airs, but I mean, legally, I guess it makes sense. They don't really want any backlash. Jess Vest went live on her Instagram and talked about how, yeah, they they see the episodes at the same time that we do. And my camera died, so here I am the next day trying to quickly wrap up this video. Continuing on with my thoughts, I did talk about Trevor earlier in this video because to be honest with you, he was one of my top, top favorites. I was like screaming at the TV like, Chelsea, what are you doing? Trevor is there for you. He's got a mullet he's just this big giant lovable teddy bear and then clearly we found out that he was not in it for marriage go through read the text messages that i put on the screen earlier i also talked about this on my instagram but like dude one of the text messages that we saw said i ran into another castmate on the plane before the show started and we both agreed why we're here and we're definitely not going to get married like what is this vetting process that the producers have to go through because apparently they go through a background check they go through a psych eval. I think they get like character recommendations from people. I, I don't even know. I mean, there's just so many things that have gone wrong this season. Like I'm just shook by all of it. Like I got played. We all got played. You know who else we all got played by? Jeremy. Also, why do you spell your name like that? Jer, stop. Enough with that. I really, really liked him at the beginning. Like I watched it. I know that a lot of people are suddenly jumping on the Love is Blind train now that all the episodes have dropped. I watched it from the beginning when it was episodes one through six and then seven and eight. And honestly, I kind of preferred that rather than binging it all at once because I was going through the motions. They were doing lots of social media promo. But during that time, I had very high hopes for Jeremy. I thought he was really cute, really great personality. I didn't really have many thoughts on Sarah Ann until the lake house girl girl please comment down below your thoughts on sarah ann because first of all we don't deserve ad the way that ad was like girl you reached out to an engaged man like was the door still open there's like i see both sides of it while i'm like sarah ann went into this just like the rest of them and because jeremy chose wrong we've come to find out jeremy chose laura it doesn't mean that sarah ann didn't really feel these feelings however oh it's tough it's tough it's tough i feel like if i was really super in love i might also want to like just send my feelings out into the world be like just in case very happy for you but just in case but AD made so many good points at the lake house of like, this was an engaged man. You should have waited for him to come to you. I don't know. That was an intense scene. And I just, I don't know. My opinions on Laura changed all throughout this too. At first I thought she was really sweet and fun and just, I did kind of sense like a drama stirring sensation. She's like a, a pot stir. She kind of wanted to get involved in other people's drama, but it wasn't until like her and Jeremy were like, fighting and obviously he was out till 5 30 a.m sent laura his location hung out with sarah ann until 5 30 in the morning you can be angry and you can be hurt and you can be upset but the way that laura talks about her feelings whoa she needs some serious therapy like if that is within you that you can say such horrible attacking name calling insulting things during a fight to someone that you say that you loved not good not a good way to communicate, girl. You're gonna you're gonna have a hard time in life if you don't get that sorted out. I also appreciated that Laura's mom said to the camera, like, if you can handle Laura and take what she dishes because she dishes a lot. I was like, oh my God, T. I loved that. Um, those were my thoughts on Laura. Please comment down below your thoughts on that. Couldn't believe that Jeremy was engaged. The news that we got was like a grandma on Facebook was like, well, Jeremy was engaged to my granddaughter and he was playing stepfather to my grandson two, like two, three weeks before filming. I don't know, because there was that whole scene when they went back to Jeremy's house and Laura's going through the cupboards and she's like, it looks staged. Like, why does it look so nice and clean? Was it? Was it staged? Did another woman decorate it for him? little feels certain types of way about that but before i found out that trevor is just the ultimate clout chasing douchebag before that putting that aside before the way that chelsea and trevor sat there and like kind of reminisced right in front of jimmy i know that that was the point of their conversation the producers were like all right you two come and sit we gotta do the chat like when chelsea said you know i still have the bracelet like the little bracelet that i got you Girl, if you're having a closure conversation, why would you bring that up? There were some things that Chelsea was saying in there that I just found very inappropriate. 
for the fact that she was an engaged woman. I do understand that he needs closure. She probably does too, but like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I appreciated that Jimmy, I appreciated that Jimmy and Trevor seem to be like bros. They have this little cute bromance going and they were able to hug it out. I mean, in the time between this video started and this video right now, I have watched the finale. Spoiler, spoiler, skip ahead if you don't wanna hear me say it. I'm so happy that Jimmy and Chelsea are not engaged. That what a toxic mess waiting to happen. Because there is such contractual things though, like we learned when Marshall from a past season spoke on his TikTok about the contract, how if you get proposed to, you have to go to the altar unless you pay them $50,000. He did say occasionally production will come to a couple and give them an out so they won't have to pay $50,000. It, I, that has to be what happened here, right? With Jimmy and Chelsea. I don't know. Glad that that is over with. Oh, oh my God. And then when Jessica and Jimmy finally meet for the first time, did anyone watch that scene a bunch of times and like turn on subtitles to like, un I couldn't understand what Jimmy was saying. I feel like he like mumbles sometimes. Dude, wow. I, again, solidified how much I love Jess. Just very well spoken, just being friends. And I just, I love that very, very much so. It was such an insane conversation, but it is what it is. It made for great television, right? Now I quickly want to talk about what happened during the finale. Spoiler, spoilers, in case you haven't seen it. Obviously, Amy and Johnny, couple of the year, so freaking cute, except for the fact that I don't really think that Johnny knows how sex works wear a condom? I, I don't know. Maybe there's something else we don't really know because Amy mentioned like, I have a condition and that's why I haven't been on birth control. I don't know. Very interesting conversation that happened with that when he was like, should I just get a vasectomy? <laughs> there's so many other options, but um, I would love, actually I'd love to know your thoughts on the Amy Johnny sex conversation. Please let me know down below what you thought of all of that. Very, very happy for them. Obviously they got married. Cannot wait to see the reunion on Wednesday. So excited, so very excited. But then AD and Clay, I'm sorry. I heard rumors that when Jimmy and Chelsea, that when Jimmy cut things off with Chelsea at the beginning of the episode, he was like, I'm not gonna fly all my family out here for, and go all the way up to the altar to say no and to embarrass her and to embarrass myself and everybody just do the whole thing. So they didn't do that, but then Clay, 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 what are you doing? Why did you do all of that? Especially at the moments when AD is walking up to the aisle and he's like, you look so good, baby. Like, I, I don't know, just really positive vibes. <laughs> he did not give AD any indication that he was just going to flat out say no. I can't marry you right now. Then why go through this? Why go through this? You guys were so happy. Like, I don't know. Was he just so afraid that he was going to cheat on her because his dad did? And and then, and then his dad kind of went off into this weird monologue and it kind of just felt like he was there for the camera. I don't know, right? That whole scene was a little bit weird. I love Clay's mom. Very strong woman. Love that she was able to just be honest on camera. And it just, it's, I kind of felt a little weird watching Clay's mom and dad like, hash out their real relationship stuff and talk about their divorce from like years and years ago. I was kind of like, I don't really know if we should be watching this, but I enjoyed it all the same. All of that was just really weird. For AD, uh, justice for AD, I want her to like be the next bachelorette or, or something. I just think that she is so strong. She's so stunning. When she was saying things of like, when is it gonna be my turn? I don't understand when I'm gonna be enough. I'm like, girl, Clay is not it for you. Clay is not it for you. I could not believe that. Um, when you go to Clay's Instagram right now, <laughs> the world is pissed off. The world is so pissed off. I wasn't expecting that, to be honest. I feel like I saw some spoilers on Instagram, but it was like, congrats to our two brides. And it was AD and Amy. And I was like, okay, cool. So like AD and Clay do get married. Matt and I were sitting there screaming at the TV, like no way, I cannot believe that. Like imagine being like AD's family. Everyone's dressed up in hair and makeup. I don't know, that's just very, very embarrassing. I know that's the premise of the show. I just really hate that part, the exploitive part that just feels wrong. AD doesn't deserve this. Whew, guys, it was a wild ride. Season six was a wild ride. I'm glad we got people like Jessica and AD from this. I'm excited to see the reunion. We did get some cast pictures of who's attending the reunion. Not everyone. We didn't get a picture of everyone, but love that Jeremy's rocking a Hawaiian shirt underneath a tux. I wonder if Kenneth will show up. I wonder if Matthew 
will show up. I don't know if I brought this up earlier in the video, but after Matthew got what he calls a bad edit, mm, I don't know if I believe that, sir, he commented on the Netflix Love is Blind Instagram and said, key element of my story that was never disclosed is that I live an alcohol-free lifestyle and did the experiment sober. It was a key factor in why I had so much difficulty connecting with women in the beginning. Sure. There was also many misrepresentations and falsehoods created in my opinion to smear my character. I look forward to telling my side of the story with the full truth at the appropriate time. In regards to Matthew walking out while Sarah Ann was talking, that has actually been debunked. That is not true. Sarah Ann even went live on her Instagram doing an AMA said, nope, that's not true. He just got a dirty edit. To that, Matt said, misrepresentation of the truth. Never walked out when a woman was talking. I don't know. Sure, you can get a bad edit, but at the end of the day, you are the guy saying, America's watching. America loves an underdog. Like, no. Ew. So much ew. <sighs> Parts of me wonder if all the goodness, the pureness of this show has been ripped from it, like in future seasons because of how successful this series has been. I feel like, I mean, season one, who follows Cam and Lauren still? They're amazing. Zach and Bliss from last season just had a baby. Like, there are people who actually find their true person, their soulmate on this show, but it's clear that it's become too big, too mainstream, and that the castmates are like weaving their way through the vetting process that the producers do to just get some clout, change their career. They don't want to be in finance anymore. They want to be a social media influencer. It's very wild and I'm dying to know what you guys think. Are you excited to watch the reunion this Wednesday? I really hope that Vanessa Lachey is not as annoying as she was in the last two seasons of reunions because I really like Vanessa Lachey, season one, season two, season three, but then suddenly she like, I don't know if she like took an upper before the last show. She was just very awful and I really hope she tones it down. It's gonna be a wild reunion, y'all. It's gonna be a wild reunion. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm dying to know your thoughts on everything that I talked about. And if you wanna know my up-to-date thoughts on Love is Blind, everything that's happened, make sure you're following me on Instagram and on TikTok. I post there daily and the reunions this Wednesday and you know I'm gonna be posting. Let me know if you guys want any more YouTube videos like this about Love is Blind because there's just so many things I'd like to dig into. I'd like to dig into why Love is Blind has been sued so many times. I wanna dig into Renee and the lawsuit that happened season five because she is someone that was on the show, got proposed to all the way to the altar and the editors cut her out from the entire show because of a lawsuit. And I feel like that's been like, just swept under the rug. She's come out recently on her social media and she's like lawyered up. So there's a lot of tea surrounding that. Please let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see from me. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video even a little bit, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and please comment your thoughts. Like, I wanna know. There's a lot of things that have happened. I hope I'm not wrong about any of the, the, the rumors, the tea, the allegations. I could very much be wrong. Like the information that I talked about in this video could eventually be incorrect if more stuff comes to light. So please feel free to come back and correct me. I'm all ears. I always like to make sure that I have the full story. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope that you enjoyed. Please leave a like and make sure you subscribe to this channel and I will see you in the next video. Bye.